I want to show you how I make my custom wooden handled saws. Now this one is made out of a piece of fiddleback ash and this piece came from the collection of Dale Nish who was my mentor. So when I got my hands on it I uh, wanted to make some nice saws out of it. That's my medium tenon. So let me show you how I start. Always looking for really pretty wood. The only problem is really pretty wood usually comes at a price and I don't just mean the cost. However this piece of snake wood which was about that long before I cut that piece out was $450 so this stuff is not cheap. However, you get home and start cutting into it and look at all the cracks. There's one here, there's one there, there's one there. And if you're going to work with it, you've got to figure out a way to deal with all of that. Well, I'll show you what we did with this one. It's the first one so far. It had a, uh, a bad crack, not just a check, but a crack right here. That crack was actually almost as wide as you see that black line. So the first thing I did, I went in and you see how it goes right down around here? and right down around there. You could actually take it and flex it slightly. I first filled it with thin cyanacrylate which went down to the parts that were actually touching. Then I used medium cyanacrylate, went down a little bit further and then I filled it with the heavy stuff, the really thick cyanacrylate. Now I still didn't want to rely on just that so what I did is I drilled a 3 16 inch hole up into the handle and inserted a brass rod. And that brass rod anchored in this solid stock will prevent any stress from being able to break open that joint. And you see a little bit of brass on there, but that's just part of something which you have to live with. Now, this one hasn't done offering me challenges. When we cut this nose section, you see how it tore badly on that side? I've got to figure out a way to go in and salvage that. I'll do it. It's just going to take some more work. So, we finally get a good piece of wood. Here's a piece of uh, really pretty maple burl. I actually hand planed and uh, put a finish on this side just so you could see how nice it is. My <clears throat> template for my handle is a piece of plexiglass and then I can go in. It's very important that I get the grain running parallel to this section right through here in order to have enough strength. So I got to go in there and lay that out and as you can see on the other side I've already done that and then this will give me what I hope is the best yield out of this piece of wood. Once we've got that done we go downstairs and bandsaw it and I try to bandsaw as close as possible to that line because all the shaping has to be done with a uh, fairly small diameter oscillating spindle sander. And the problem there is you're trying to do an outside curve like this with a single point on a small sander. It really takes a knack to finally get that nice and flowing. Now this actually is my, uh, my hobby. I used to build furniture. I no longer take commissions so this has become the part that I really enjoy doing and I do all of this process myself. So once we've got the sh outside uh, line shaped, I go down and I smooth out the flats on the top and on the bottom so they come out nice and smooth. I take those up to 400 grit and then I shape. Usually I use a router to shape these rounded parts so that it fits your hand just nicely. Sometimes we have to uh, bring in a small rasp to work with some stuff that we just can't route. Then we go ahead and we cut a slot to accept the brass from the saw and then we also cut in here with a uh, special cutter and this is the part that the blade where the blade goes. Then we drill them and uh, we have to counter bore them. We use split nuts. I have these custom made. These are called brass split, split nuts. That's the top one, the small diameter. And that nut uses a special split nut driver. Got one here in my pocket. That you can go in there and it allows you to work around the bolt and get that nice and tight and then there's the bottom one. So we flush those off all before we ever mount this. Here's one out of a piece of cocoa bola where I happen to find a little bit of sapwood up there in the horn. We flush them off and then we take them out and we polish them separately and we go ahead and we finish the rest of this. Now on most of these we take this up to 600 grit which just gives a beautiful feel to it. And of course we make these so that that one handle will accept a dovetail saw, a crosscut saw, a medium tenon, or a, uh, our new uh, bench cross cut. So any of those it'll fit. So we sell it, we advertise it like that so that you can turn around and tell us, yeah I want that on a medium tenon or I want that on a dovetail and then I can go ahead and finish it off. But these are, uh, this is, I just can't get over how beautiful some of this stuff is. This actually is a piece of Gaboon Ebony and I found a piece that had just a little bit of sapwood on here and I've got another piece that had a little bit of sapwood up there and I thought that would make a beautiful pair across cut and dovetail. So if that interests you, 
You'll see these change on our site because I sometimes only have one or two of each. We advertise them. That's the one you're actually buying. And when you buy it, we take it off and it's no longer available. And as I get time to make some more, we'll put them up there for sale. Hope you enjoyed this.